Hello everyone, this is Waterfall Joe and welcome to another video. In today's video we're going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to list my 10 favorite waterfalls that I've visited so far. I'm very grateful that I've been able to travel the world and see so many amazing sights and I'm hoping to keep the adventures going as time goes on. Now I've never actually sat and thought about my 10 favorite waterfalls up until I decided to make this video. So this was really challenging for me to make. And even now, as I'm making it, I'm still not 100% confident in the waterfall list as there's so many amazing choices that I had to exclude just because I didn't want this to be an hour long. If you want to see an hour long version, I'd be happy to make one. Leave it in the comments below if you want to. Now this list is ever changing and these are my current 10 favorite. But in a year or two from now, if I decide to make another one of these videos, this could, list could be completely different. So only time will tell. So starting us off at number 10, we're going to Starved Rock State Park and Matheson State Park in Illinois. Now these state parks are home to incredible waterfalls and a relatively flat part of Illinois. It's about 90 minutes south of Chicago, and no one would really expect that such a breathtaking park would be kind of in the middle of farmlands. Now Starved Rock and Matheson are home to countless waterfalls, but I'm picking Lake Falls at Matheson State Park as my number 10 pick. Lake Falls drops 65 feet from the lake above into the dell below, and it is just one of the most majestic looking waterfalls you can find. If you're a fan of plunge drop waterfalls like me, this is one of the best that it gets. Just it is a, a wall of cascading water, and it is absolutely incredible. Now, because this is in the Midwest, it does require a fair amount of rain to get these flowing, so I'd recommend visiting after a good storm, or during a good storm, to see the waterfalls flowing at their best potential. All right, so for number nine, we're actually here in Connecticut. It's the first Connecticut waterfall on this list, but not the last. This is Nanawag Falls in Bethlehem, Connecticut. Now, Nanawag Falls is a small, about 20 foot tall waterfall deep in the woods. But the first time I visited, I felt like I had been transported deep to a, a deep, lush rainforest and that I was gonna see a dinosaur pop out. The green surrounding the waterfall are so lush, especially after good rain and in the summer. It just feels like a deep tropical rainforest deep in the woods of Connecticut. Now this one also needs quite a good amount of rain to get flowing because it is a smaller watershed. But when it is flowing, it is absolutely worth your time hiking there and seeing it. It is a majestic, beautiful waterfall and I'm happy to have visited. In October of 2020, my girlfriend and I went on a nice little vacation around the Olympic Peninsula. We rented a camper van, we drove around the entire Olympic Peninsula, we got to see the beaches, the rainforest, the mountaintops, it was absolutely awesome. The prized jewel of Olympic National Park is Soul Duck Falls. Now, the Soul Duck River begins high in the Olympic Mountains, and as it works its way through the landscape on the way to the Pacific Ocean, that is where Soul Duck Falls is. Now, Soul Duck Falls is about a 50 foot tall drop waterfall, and it is one of the most unique formed waterfalls you'll ever see. It essentially flows this way, and then it turns, drops, and then continues flowing. It's, it's like a little zigzag waterfall. It's absolutely breathtaking. There's a wooden bridge that goes over the top of it, and when you stand there, you'll feel the spray because it's that powerful. Depending on when you go, you might see it as four or five tiers. You might only see it as one tier. We visited in October of 2020 and we got to see it at its max force and it was a very humbling experience. For number seven on our list, we're coming back to the East Coast for Bash Bish Falls in Massachusetts. Now, first of all, I know you want me to say Bish Bash Falls, but unfortunately it is Bash Bish Falls. That's the name. I know it sounds funky. Now, Bash Bish Falls is one of Massachusetts' finest waterfalls and potentially one of New England's best waterfalls. Now, I haven't visited New Hampshire or Vermont or Maine yet, so I can't speak for it, but I will say, in terms of Connecticut and Massachusetts, it's one of my favorites so far. Now, Bash Bish Falls is on the Massachusetts-New York border, and you can actually park on the Massachusetts or New York side. Just know the New York side is much easier to do. Bash Bish is extremely distinct as it has a humongous boulder in the middle of the waterfall and it actually splits it into two different falls that drop about 60 feet into the pool below. Unfortunately, this waterfall gets super busy and packed and they usually shut down the waterfall access during hot months to where you cannot get down to the base of it. There is still an overview from above you can see it from, 
but unfortunately if you plan on going during a warm month you will, you will not be able to get close to the waterfall. For number six on this list we're heading to southern Illinois. Now southern Illinois is home to over 100 rain dependent waterfalls some ranging from tiny ones all the way up to a couple hundred feet tall. Southern Illinois is absolutely breathtaking and is often overlooked in the world of waterfall photography. Now when I lived in St. Louis, I would always keep an eye on the forecast of the weather in Southern Illinois because if I saw that it had been raining for a few days, I would drive three hours to get down there to see the waterfalls. Waterfalls in Illinois do not flow naturally and they do require a ton of rain to get flowing. Sometimes I would get there and there would be nothing, even after a, a big storm. And sometimes you'd get there and it would be rushing and roaring and it's just one of the best feelings you can have as a photographer. Where we're going now is Fern Cliff State Park. This is home to what, in my opinion, is the best waterfall in all of Illinois and maybe even the Midwest. This waterfall is over 100 feet tall and it only happens after a significant rain. So maybe not as many people have seen it compared to one of the more popular waterfalls that are always flowing. I absolutely love this place. It holds such a special place in my heart. I've only visited a few times as it was a three hour drive one way from St. Louis to see it. But every time I visited and got to see it flowing, it was, it was such a special experience for me. This waterfall is tucked at the end of a box canyon. So you, you're in this canyon and it's roaring, but the canyon is amplifying the sounds of the waterfall too. And it only flows right after rain, you know, give it a day or so and it dries right up. It's a very special place and I highly recommend adding it to your bucket list. And while you're in Southern Illinois, definitely check out all of the other incredible waterfalls in that area. Within an hour drive, you could be at some of the best waterfalls you'll find in the Midwest, such as Burden Falls, Jackson Falls, and my favorite is called Bork Falls. It's actually within Fern Cliff and it's one of only two waterfalls you can drive over in Illinois. What a cool place. For number five, we're jumping across the Atlantic Ocean to Iceland at Seljalandsfoss. Back in October of 2017, I went on a 10-day photography workshop with the legendary Danny Eade and Daniel Chong of Dubai. Now these guys were great. They took us all around Iceland showing us some of the best sites we could see. And I think that trip helped inspire me to be a landscape photographer even more than I was already interested in. One of the highlights of the trip was Seljalandsfoss. This absolutely stunning 200 foot tall waterfall drops off of a cliff which used to actually be the coastline of Iceland. One of my biggest regrets is I did not go behind the waterfall. There's a little trail to go behind it. I stayed in front taking pictures. I never even thought to venture back behind it. The good news is, is this June, my girlfriend and I are going on a road trip around Iceland in a rented camper van. We're doing the ring road, we're doing the golden circle. Seljalandsfoss is absolutely on our list. Fun fact for those of you who are planning on visiting, just to the side of Seljalandsfoss is another waterfall hidden in a cave. Not a lot of people see it, not a lot of people know about it. You should absolutely venture around Seljalandsfoss and explore the area because there's some awesome things hiding there. For number four on this list, we're actually staying in Iceland and we're actually traveling about 30 minutes east of Seljalandsfoss to the world famous Skogafoss. Now both Seljalandsfoss and Skogafoss are very popular, but I do believe Skogafoss is significantly more famous. It has been featured in movies, music videos, television shows. You've probably seen countless pictures of Skogafoss, but for a good reason. This absolutely breathtaking 200 foot waterfall falls off of a cliff that used to be the coastline just like Seljalandsfoss. I was fortunate enough to visit it during the day and also come back later that night and I got to see it with the northern lights above it and that was a truly humbling experience. If you can go to Iceland during the winter, it will change your life. For number three, we're jumping across the Atlantic all the way across the United States to California for Mikway Falls in Big Sur. In April of 2023, my girlfriend and I took a road trip from Las Vegas out to Big Sur and up to San Francisco in a rented camper van, and it was absolutely amazing. We got to see the Milky Way at Death Valley, which you guys have seen on my channel before, and we also got to drive up the Pacific Coast Highway, or at least the portions of it that weren't closed due to landslides. One of my favorite things that we got to see was Mikway Falls. Mikway Falls is an 80 foot tall waterfall that drops directly into the ocean and it is one of only very few waterfalls that do. 
Now, prior to the 90s, Mikwe Falls actually dumped directly into the ocean, but currently it actually dumps directly onto a little beach that has formed due to debris. People have theorized that over time, the beach is actually going to start to wash away, and maybe one day, the waterfall will dump right into the ocean again. This place has suffered from incredible erosion, and I am a little worried that in the future, people will not actually be able to visit this waterfall anymore due to the trail completely eroding away. When you visit here, you can only go so far before it's closed due to landslides and erosion damage. If this isn't on your bucket list, put it on your bucket list and get there as soon as possible because I don't know how much longer that trail is going to last. For number two on our list, we're actually staying on the west coast and heading up to Washington State for Panther Creek Falls. Now Panther Creek Falls is within the Columbia River Gorge of Oregon and Washington and it is one of the finest places in the world for waterfalls. Panther Creek Falls is one of the most unique waterfalls you can imagine as it is a combination of a trickle waterfall as it works its way down the, the side of a hill, but it also looks like it's coming out of the mountain as well. It is such an extremely unique waterfall. Now it was hard to pick which waterfall of the Columbia River Gorge to choose from, but Panther Creek Falls is just so incredibly unique it had to make the list. So before we get to number one, I'm going to give you three honorable mentions that just I couldn't figure out where to put them. So number one on the honorable mentions is Don Robinson State Park in Missouri. Now this is a little bit of a cheat code because this isn't actually a waterfall. It's not a, people don't go here for the waterfall unless you're me or you're crazy. Don Robinson State Park is a tiny little state park in Cedar Hill, Missouri. And this waterfall takes so much rain to get flowing there's not a lot of pictures of it out there because it takes so much. This was my local waterfall when I lived in St. Louis. It was about 30 minutes away and I would go here every day I had off and it had rained. I only saw it flowing a couple times though because it took so much rain to get flowing. I am so grateful that one day I got to shoot this photo here. I went back many times after this in hopes of recreating it but I just never got the right conditions. And that's what it's all about as a photographer is just right place, right time, and right everything. The good news is this park is absolutely breathtaking with its sandstone canyons and it is well worth your time otherwise. I am one, I'm lucky that one time I got to see it flowing, the conditions were perfect, and I got to capture one of my favorite images of all time. This park is what helped me fall in love with waterfall photography. I would always visit here in hopes of seeing it and it kind of had like this mystical feeling of will I ever see this waterfall and I finally did and it just set off this spark in me that I wanted to shoot every waterfall I can find. Now jumping to Connecticut for the second honorable mention is Roaring Brook Falls here in Connecticut. Funny enough, talking about my local waterfall in Missouri, Roaring Brook Falls is actually my new current local waterfall here in Connecticut. Roaring Brook Falls is one of Connecticut's tallest waterfalls at over 80 feet tall. And if you're a moron like me, you can get to the base of it, but it is extremely dangerous and I don't recommend it. I highly recommend not doing that and just going up the normal trail to the viewing section, which is much safer, but not as good of a view. Roaring Brook Falls is an 80 foot tall drop waterfall off the side of a mountain into a ravine and it is just one of the coolest places. And now for our final honorable mention is the incredible world famous Multnomah Falls in Oregon. Earlier I was talking about the Columbia River Gorge, Multnomah Falls is the prize jewel of the Columbia River Gorge. At over 600 feet tall, this is one of the tallest waterfalls in Oregon. Now Multnomah Falls is visible from the interstate and that contributes to its popularity. This place fills up so quickly and I got to visit it one time in October of 2019. I arrived early morning, I got to see the waterfall before it got crazy, and I, when I walked back to my car there was not a single open spot in the parking lot. So if you're going to visit this one, get there early or get there on a gross day when no one else is there. All right, for number one on the list, it is Wadsworth Falls here in Connecticut. And it is my favorite waterfall because it is 20 minutes down the street from me. It is a river, so it is always flowing. And there's so many unique perspectives you can get by either shooting it from the side, by going into the water with it, by shooting it from above. I did my, my last video I posted was actually from Wadsworth Falls where I actually got some waders and I went out into the water and shot it. Aside from Wadsworth Falls, there's also the little waterfall tucked back in the woods. Overall, it's just one of my favorites. 
I've shot it all four seasons and it is just such a great experience. I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe you added one or two of these to your bucket list. Let me know in the comments below what's your favorite waterfall. If you liked the video, consider subscribing and hitting that like button. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.